Hey guys, I'm Chandni and you're watching The Art of Science. Hey guys, so welcome back to the studio. So the footage you just saw of me was taken about a month ago when I went on a two-day trip to an astronomical observatory. Yup, you heard that right. I visited an observatory and it was quite literally an art of the world experience. So today's video of The Art of Science is going to be a brief overview of the entire trip and what I saw and learned in this trip. So let's get started. The observatory I visited is called Dark Matters Observatory. It's nestled in this small village called Narayan Gaon, Maharashtra, which is approximately 100 kilometers from the city of dreams, Mumbai. So how to get there? Well, if you're from Mumbai, you can take your car and drive there directly like a lot of people did. If not, you can follow what I did, which is Step 1. Travel to Mumbai Step 2. Have breakfast Step 3. Reach to the local station and take some aesthetic pictures Step 4. Take a local train on the central line to Asangaon station Step 5. Hop into an auto rickshaw which will take you to your destination in about 30 to 45 minutes which is actually a really long time and we are here this observatory was such a beautiful and clean place which is owned and run by the senior astronomer here, Javed, who handled our bookings. They had these wonderful telescope mounts set up. And this here is Vijay. He's another astronomer who guided us to the night sky and also helped us with the telescopes. Thank you, Vijay! The session starts at about 4pm where you begin by observing the sun. After this, we took a small snack break and walked into this beautiful lake which is just about 5-7 to seven minutes from the observatory. The environment here is just perfect. It's beautiful, chilly, silent, peaceful and has clear skies which meant lots of stars. After the lake encounter, we had some lectures on space and what we were about to see. In this lecture given by Javed, we learned a lot of things like about the entire solar system, details about the planets, their moons, the age of Earth, the age of Sun, galaxies, nebulas, stars, birth and death of stars and so much more. After this lecture, we started with the observations. And first, we saw Jupiter. Those are the three moons of Jupiter. And I'm not even kidding, but you could actually see the moons revolving through the telescope. It was crazy. While we waited for our turn in the telescope room next, we put out some chairs and gazed into the night sky. I have never seen so many stars at once and it felt like it was right out of a fairy tale. And the night sky was so clear that we even spotted four shooting stars. And they move really fast, which is why it was very difficult for me to capture them on camera. Anyways, after we had dinner, we all sat in groups staring upon the night sky while the astronomers taught us about stars. So we observed new stars, old stars, the Orion belt, uh, lots and lots of constellations and even the North Star or the Dhruv Tara. After all of this, we continued with our telescope viewing and next up were galaxies. The first galaxy that we saw was Andromeda Galaxy. This is the Andromeda Galaxy. Andromeda is actually a neighbouring galaxy, which is about 2.5 million light years away from us. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Let's understand what a light year is. Usually, we measure speeds in kilometres per hour, right? Typically, a car or a bike would go at about 40 to 50 kilometres per hour, which equates to around 0.01 kilometres in a second. The fastest race car we know has achieved a top speed of 480 km per hour, which comes to about 0.1 km per second. Even commercial airplanes travel at 0.2 km per second. Now let's look at the fastest object we know. The fastest man-made object is a fighter jet. NASA's X-43 experimental plane has achieved a top speed of 11,800 kilometers per hour, which means it travels 3.2 kilometers in a single second. Can you imagine that? 3.2 kilometers in a second, in the blink of your eye. But did you know that there is something around us 
that travels much faster than this fighter jet. It travels about a hundred thousand times faster. And that object is light. Light travels at a staggering speed of 3 lakh kilometers in a single second. 3 lakh kilometers. It is so fast that in a single second, it could go around the Earth 7 times. Now let's come back to what a light year is. Kilometers and miles are enough for us to measure distances on Earth. But for space, they become really small. So that's why they came up with a light year. Light year is the amount of distance light travels in an entire year. So that's about 2,99,000 multiplied by 60 to convert to minutes, multiplied by 60 again to convert for hours, multiplied by 24, which is the number of hours in a day, multiplied by 365, which is the number of days in a year. Now this is equal to 9 trillion kilometers. Well, now let's get back to the Andromeda galaxy. The Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away from us, which means that last month, when I observed this galaxy from the telescope, the light from the galaxy took 2.5 million years to travel from there and finally reach my eyes. Now this also means that light from Earth takes 2.5 million years to reach Andromeda galaxy. Which means that today, right now, as we speak, if somebody residing in Andromeda galaxy decided to put up a telescope and observe us Earthlings, they would see Earth as it was 2.5 million years ago. Which means they would see the first few humans living in caves, hunting for food and lighting fire with stones. Anyways, after being mind blown by this fact, we observe some more galaxies. These are the Cigar and the Bodes galaxies. By this time, it was almost 2 a.m. in the night and the temperature dropped to 12 degrees Celsius. We warmed up with this hot chai and we were back to observing the night sky and the next object were nebulas. Nebulas are basically cosmic clouds of gas and dust. And this is where stars are born. In fact, some nebulas are also a result of a supernova. A supernova is when a large star explodes. Nebulas come in different shapes, sizes and patterns and they teach us a lot about the life cycle of stars. This is the Orion Nebula, which is the most common one. Then we have the Seahorse Nebula and the Rosette Nebula. One thing to mention here is that all these pictures of galaxies and nebulas aren't taken directly from the telescope. In fact, when you observe through a telescope, you just see a hazy cloud-like item. We actually get these pictures from space cameras. Space cameras take long exposure images to capture faint light from distant galaxies and nebulas. They then stack these images and project them on a screen. By this time, it was 3.30 am, so I went to sleep, but some astronomers and guests continued viewing the night sky until 4.30 am in the morning. Oh, sleeping reminds me. The sleeping arrangement in the observatory is also pretty cool. They have these trailers with bunk beds and also these tents, both of which are super clean and comfortable. Next day morning after breakfast, we observed the sun once again. And in the sun, we majorly observed two things, which were the sunspots and the sun flares. Sunspots are area that appear dark on the surface of the sun. The reason why they appear dark is because they are cooler than the other parts of the sun's surface. And solar flares are sudden explosion of energy caused by disturbance in the magnetic field lines near the sunspots. And that's it. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the video. So this was my amazing two-day journey to this observatory. It was truly a breathtaking experience. I will be mentioning their website and their social media handles in the description box below. So make sure you check that out. If you like this video, well, like this video. Comment down below if you learned something new today. To watch more such science content, make sure you subscribe to The Art of Science. And we'll see you next week.